now we will uh, we will request a san diego satsang group to start the program manna yes okay, thank you mohanji yes yeah. thank you mohanji yeah. yeah. um we are planning to read a few passages from uh, the book called living by the words of bhagwan uh, this is the book is by david godman and it is um anamalai swami's account of uh, his life with bhagwan so we will we have three members of the well including me there's four members of our satsang here today there's daniel wood there's reena chatkara and there's uh, rani madhav pedi so we will start with uh, daniel um, dan please go ahead and you can start um, your reading okay can you hear me okay the following questions were put by Maurice Friedman. Question. Sri Bhagavan has written in Uladu Narpadu Anubadam, verse 38, that one should not show Advaita in one's activities. Why so? All are one. Why differentiate? Bhagavan. Would you like to sit on the seat that I'm sitting on? Question. I don't mind sitting there, but if I came and sat there, the Sarva Dikari and the other people here would hit me and chase me away. Bhagavan, yes, nobody would allow you to sit here. If you saw someone molesting a woman, would you let him go thinking all is one? There is a scriptural story about this. Some people once gathered together to test whether it is true, as said in the Bhagavad Gita, that a jnani sees everything as one. They took a Brahmin, an untouchable, a cow, an elephant, and a dog to the court of King Janaka, who was a Jnani. When all had arrived, King Janaka sent the Brahmin to the place of the Brahmins, the cow to its shed, the elephant to the place allotted to elephants, the dog to its kennel, and the untouchable person to the place where the other untouchables lived. He then ordered his servants to take care of his guests and feed them all appropriate food. The people asked, why did you separate them individually? Is not everything one and the same for you? Yes, all are one, replied Janaka, but self-satisfaction varies according to the nature of the individual. Will a man eat the straw eaten by the cow? Will the cow enjoy the food that a man eats? One should only give what satisfies each individual person or animal. Although the same man may play the role of all the characters in a play, his acts will be determined by the role that he is playing at each moment. In the role of a king, he will sit on the throne and rule. If the same person takes on the role of a servant, he will carry the sandals of his master and follow him. His real self is neither increased nor decreased while he plays these roles. The Gyani never forgets that he himself has played all these roles in the past. Rina? Okay. A devotee from Chichi brought his son into the hall. After doing namaskaram to Bhagwan, he sat down. The boy, though he was still very young, was very was clearly showing sign that he was very worried. After two of them had sat down, Bhagwan inquired, which train did you come on? The devotee replied, we came at 8.30 this morning. Bhagwan then asked, how is Dattatreya, the boy with the worried look? The devotee answered, having unsuccessfully tried all sorts of medicine and mantras, we have come to Shri Bhagwan as a last resort. As he was saying this, he folded his hands in gesture of supplication. Shri Bhagwan spoke to the boy, having the name Dattarya, why should you worry like this? You should always be blissful. Instead of that, why should you spoil the bliss with this mind? Bhagwan then narrated all the other devotees, the history of the great Niyani, Dattarya, who lived in ancient days. 
That area used to wander the forest without even a lion clock. He was always full of the bliss of Brahman. Seeing this, Yadu Maharaj, a local ruler, thought to himself, how is it that he is always blissful? I have everything, but I still have to suffer. Filled with this thought, he went to Dhatarya one day and asked him, how is it that you are always full of bliss? Dhatarya replied, what is there other than bliss? The king asked him, how does this bliss come to you? Dhatarya replied, to acquire this ananda, bliss, I had a number of acharyas, teachers. It came through them. When the king asked him who his, his teachers had been, Dattarya told him a long story. O king, I had 24 gurus. They were grasped by the inquiry made by my intellect. I am wandering in, wandering in this world as a mukta, liberated one. Only because of the jnana I gained through these acharyas. Understand who these acharyas are. The earth, the air, the sky, water, fire, the sun, the moon, a wild pigeon, a python, the ocean, a grasshopper, a bee, an elephant, a honey gatherer, a deer, Pingala the prostitute, a child, a small girl, and an archer, a snake, and a few others. Among the 24, I have rejected a few. I have learned patience from the earth, omnipresence from air, non-attachment from the sky, pentlessness from the fire, purity from water, and the truth that all changes are for the body and not for the self from the moon. The sun shines equally on all things, but it is not affected by them. From this I learn that Though the yogi may see objects, he should not be affected by the gunas, which cause them to interact. From the wild pigeon, I have I learned that whoever gets attached to his residence will slip down from his elevated position. I understood that, like the like the python, one must take whatever food comes by itself. From the from the ocean, I understood that I should be placid majestic, unperturbed, and difficult to fathom. The grasshopper, which falls into the flame of the lamp, burns to death. From this, I understood that a man who falls into the fire of lust for a woman perishes. I learned from the bee that one should get food just sufficient to nourish one's body without forcing others to give. Even the strong male elephant undergoes suffering by coming into contact the female elephant. From this I learned that a man is likewise subjected to suffering if he is touched by a woman or spends time in their proximity. The honey collected by bees over many days is stolen by the honey gatherer. From him I learned that wealth earned by great hardship is often stolen by other people. The deer gets caught in the hunter's neck after being enticed by the hunter's music. Similarly, a sannyasin will fall into bondage if he gives way to moha, delusion caused by desire. Therefore, from the deer, I understood that a sannyasin should not take notice of sense objects. Unable to conquer its tongue, the fish dies after getting caught on the hook. I learned from the fish that anyone who does not conquer his tongue, that is, his desire for tasty things, will suffer. One must conquer the tongue, Pingala the Kursan, after nicely decorating himself, decorating herself, was once strolling about while she was waiting for a lover who had promised to bring her money. When he didn't turn up, she became very sad and dejected. Her face turned pale and her mind was distressed. She investigated the cause of her distress and understood the painful nature of petty pleasures. When she found that she, the source of all happiness is the spring, self, she attained viragya, detachment, 
by worshiping the supreme self as her, her husband, she attained the true happiness of jnana. From Pingala, the court son, I have learned that there is no happiness in anything external and that the only worthy attainment is the happiness of the self. I learned from the child that one should be ob oblivious to honor and dishonor. Now I tell you the story of the small girl. At a time when her parents were not in the village, a number of people came to take her in marriage. She wanted to feed them, but she started milling the paddy by herself to get rice to cook for them. She became shy. Her bangles were making a lot of noise. After removing one from each hand, there was no other noise. From this act of the small girl, I understood that a yogi should remain alone. From the arrow maker, I learned that one should be one pointed in one's aims. The snake lives happily in the hole made by the rat. From that snake, I learned to live happily in other houses. I have 25th guru, that is my body. The body is, is the cause of my jnana and my viragya. Having merged in hurry, God, the self, the love and devotion, my state is now equal to the one who knows nothing. In this way, Dattarya taught Yadu Maharaj all the jnana he had grasped through his 25 gurus and ended his story. Having told the boy all the Upanas' teachings, which Dattarya told to the king, Bhagwan asked him graciously, you are also called Dattarya, aren't you? At least for your name's sake, you must be happy. Thank you. Bhagavan once made the following remarks about the waking and dream states. The world vision which appears in the waking state and the world vision which appears in the dream state are both the same. There's not even a trace of a difference. The dream state happens merely to prove the unreality of the world which we see in the waking state. This is one of the operations of God's grace. The world of the waking state changes in the same way as the world of the dream state. Both are equally insubstantial and equally unreal. Some people dispute this by saying, but the same world which we saw yesterday is existing today. Dream worlds are never the same from one night to the next. Therefore, how can we believe that the world of the waking state is unreal? History tells us that this world has existed for thousands of years. We take the evidence that this changing world has been existing for a long time and decide that this constitutes a proof that the world is real. This is an unjustified conclusion. The world is changing every minute. How? Our body is not the same as it was when we were young. A lamp which we light at night may seem to be the same in the morning, but all the oil in the flame has changed. Is this not so? Water flows in a river. If we see the river on two successive days, we see it as the same river, but it is not the same. The water has completely changed. The world is always changing. It is not permanent, but we exist unchanged in all the three states of the waking, dreaming, and sleeping. Nobody can truthfully say, I did not exist during these three states. Therefore, we must conclude that this I is the permanent substance because everything else is in a state of perpetual flux. If you never forget this, this is liberation. Since this view of the world is so contrary to what we regard as common sense, Bhagavan was frequently questioned about it. Even his long-term devotees sometimes tried to get him to modify his views a little. I remember, for instance, one evening in the hall when Major Chadwick tried to persuade Bhagavan that the world did have some reality and permanence. 
If the world exists only when my mind exists, he began. When my mind subsides in meditation or sleep, does the outside world disappear also? I think not. If one considers the experiences of others who were aware of the world while I slept, one must conclude that the world existed then. Is it not more correct to say that the world got created and is ever existing in some huge collective mind? If this is true, how can one say that there is no world and that it is only a dream? Bhagwan refused to modify his position. The world does not say that it was created in the collective mind or that it was created in the individual mind. It only appears in your small mind. If your mind gets destroyed, there is no world. To illustrate this truth, Bhagwan narrated a story. Long ago, there was a man whose father had died 30 years before. One day, he had a dream in which his father was alive. When in the dream, he, the man who had the dream, was a boy who had four younger brothers. His dream father had accumulated a great fortune, which he divided among the five brothers. The four younger brothers were not satisfied with their share. Out of jealousy, they came to fight with the eldest brother and began to beat him up. As he was receiving the beating in the dream, he woke up. On waking up, he very happily realized that he had neither a father nor any brothers. He discovered that all of the characters he had dreamt, he alone really existed. Similarly, if we go beyond this waking dream and see only our real self, we will discover that there is no world and there are no other people. On the other hand, if we move away from the self and see the world, we find that we are in bondage. Bhagavan summarized these views a little later by saying, every jiva or the individual soul is seeing a separate world, but a jnani does not see anything other than himself. This is the state of truth. Om Thank you, Rani. Now we turn it over to Arunachala Ashram in New York. Uh, 